I've fallen into this crazy rabbit hole trying to find the best Windows computer for most people. It sort of spun off by your comments on my MacBook Air video because Listen, I get it. Not all of you want a Mac, not all of you edit video, and uh, you also want another good alternative to a functional ecosystem, should I say. Now, the problem is that Windows is complicated, mainly because there's just so much variety and each company has its own approach to value. They're either really cheap and compromised or the premium sector is split between gaming computers and ultrabooks. Once you pick that, you then realize that the starting price that got you to click is BS because the computer is only worth it if you spend MacBook kind of money. Now, the reason why I did this research is because after my hands-on experience with the Samsung's Galaxy Book Pro 360, what struck me most was just how balanced the offer was for the price. Aside from like one or two examples that I found from HP, which I could review later, I looked at Microsoft, Dell, and others only to realize that in almost everything, this might just be the best bang for the buck Windows computer you can buy. It's not perfect, of course, but the tricks that make it unique might just be enough to win you over. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and let's dive into our review. Samsung's approach to laptops is almost as daring as its approach to smartphones. While most companies are doing the bare minimum to keep the cost down, it's crazy just how much Sammy is able to cram on a computer for that same price tag. Last year's Galaxy Book Flex had a far better QLED display, for example, brought an S Pen, threw in some Thunderbolt Love, and even a trackpad that could reverse charge your Xi-enabled devices. Its only problem at the time was that it launched before the pandemic really hit, so the price wasn't really a sensitive topic at the time as it is today. For this year, even if this Book Pro 360 is a bit more conservative, it follows on a couple of fan favorites. To start, the design and build of this computer is crazy. 6000 series aluminum and a very sharp footprint allow this 15 inch model to be almost as light as a MacBook Air and making the 13 inch MacBook Pro look bad with far less footprint. It's one of those products you just have to hold to believe. Now, selections are also made simple. Two size options for each of the two variants with colors depending on your selection, with me clearly being a mystic bronze kind of guy. Now, the Pro is for those who care more about price than features, but it's also interesting that no matter how high you configure the Pro 360, the price is still lower than most. For context, if I compare this higher tier review unit to similar specifications on a MacBook Air, the Galaxy is less expensive and provides more features. And yet there's still more to this package. Three USB-C ports with one of this being Thunderbolt 4 micro SD expansion, which is better than nothing. And these new 11th generation Intel chips already have me believing that I can trust that company again. My buddy David Kogan from the Unlocker spent some of his real world test testing and proving that you can edit a video with this machine, which says a lot about Intel's XE graphics and the whole Evo certification. I wouldn't say that you'll get the 20 hours of advertised endurance, but a solid work day of moderate to heavy use in my testing. And by the way, my use of Windows computers is based mostly on productivity software, which I feel this computer handles pretty well. No lag or stutter in more than a week of testing, and I can't really say that I heard the fans kicking in that much, even with multiple Chrome tabs open, though more on software in a bit. Now, this is also one of my favorite keyboards, like ever. Its backlit sure has all the shortcuts that I care about, including a new privacy key to disable the camera and the microphone, and a pretty accurate fingerprint scanner baked into the power button. Now, what makes it special is that even if Samsung doesn't really mention anything different about these scissor switches, they're kind of surreal because they're so silent that they feel more responsive than they actually sound. 
At first, I was also a tad reluctant in grabbing the larger model because I always get confused with numeric keypads, but this trackpad saves the day. See, Samsung placed it asymmetrically in order to match the text keys and avoid accidental touches. And then if you match that with its significant size and accuracy and gestures, and really the combo just feels right. And then there's the display. At this price, there's just no way you can get an AMOLED panel with this amount of color and contrast ratio. And then Samsung also adopted some of the technology from the Hinge and the Z Fold 2 lineup in order to avoid the wobble that we got with previous iterations. It follows on last year's design language where bezels are minimal in at least three of the four corners, and we've got the 720p webcam where it's supposed to be. Now, honoring its 360 name, yes, you can morph this form factor into a tent for movies or as a tablet in order to take advantage of its S Pen support. And sure, a lot of laptops at this price have some sort of stylus support, but the Wacom digitizer on this panel is second to none, with the Microsoft Surface only getting close to its feel and accuracy. It is included in the box and now larger for added ergonomics. And sure, you lose the silo to tuck it away, and I wouldn't recommend the magnets built into the lid, but I'll take that any day because of its added grip. Now, another reason this computer is special is because it truly is a Galaxy book, meaning if you're already in the Samsung ecosystem, this is the computer you should get. Windows 10 is jam-packed with Samsung software that helps this laptop talk with your Galaxy phones or even accessories like your Galaxy Buds. From a desktop version of Samsung Notes to Dex on a more logical screen, think of this as the larger Galaxy Note that you always wanted, but with the advantage that you can even extend the display if you own a compatible Galaxy tablet. It's not free of bloat, sadly, with unwanted titles like McAfee and Booking.com, but that's an easy problem to uninstall. But all right, don't worry. As much as there's a lot to love, this is not a fanboy piece. By now, you know that I'll point out what things could improve about this product, and there are a couple of things that I'm mixed about. The first is that I would recommend that you pick the 13-inch model, mainly because of the resolution on the panel. Both sizes are 1080p, but at 15 inches, this is already borderline pixelated. I'll forgive Full HD because it's AMOLED at this price, but on a large panel, pixel density is key if you'd like to reduce the scale of the operating system and multitask better. And I know some have complained about brightness, but at 370 nits, it's pretty much MacBook Air territory, which I found to be good enough for my use. Now, if anything, I would complain about the bottom bezel because I know you will. Now, second is that for all the punch this display provides, it's marred by the speakers. They've got all certifications galore like AKG tuning and Dolby Atmos, but they lack the depth that I've come to expect from Samsung. The best way to understand how it's possible that the flagships of two- I honestly would have given up all that numeric keypad on the side if it would make the speakers front firing. And last but not least is that I wish palm rejection was better. And this is not like Wacom, so it could just be a problem with my specific unit because I don't remember ever having that issue with the Galaxy Book Flex or any other Galaxy Note sort of type of product from Samsung, so I'll keep you posted in the comments in case a software update improves it. To conclude, yes, I know there's a lot of choice when it comes to a good Windows computer. Yes, I know most have a touchscreen that supports some sort of a stylus and might cost a bit less money than this machine. Now, the question is, how many of these have an AMOLED panel at that price? How many of these include Wacom support, which is best in class? How many offer a design that's hard to compete with? And best of all, how many can say that they support your smartphone ecosystem and help you get more out of combining them together? I'd even say that Apple struggles when trying to compete with this package, at least from a features for the price perspective. It is definitely not the perfect machine, and I'm sure that some of you will argue with my assessment, but I seriously feel that this is one of the best Windows laptops that you can buy in this premium price bracket. 
even if others get pretty close once you spec them up, I think ecosystems alone are a very important deal today, and very few computers or even companies get this as right as Samsung is doing with the Galaxy Book Pro 360. I really have no problem in recommending it. Now, let us know if you agree with my assessment in the comments down below, and while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on my personal handles to see me find the Windows computer that matches that video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.